like, since when did you become in charge? Who made you king? Yeah, I always try to say, I'm going to make this short. And the Holy Spirit is like, you don't make that call. <laughs> Who died and put you in charge, I'm a bond. Sit your ass down somewhere. Um, excuse me, I was just speculating. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> A lot of things going on. But I've tried not to say I'm going to make this short anymore because I keep being made into a liar. Yep. <clears throat> We ought to obey, we ought to obey Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, rather than men. Yep, that's why. Because we go off in this flesh. We go off all the time. <clears throat> the question is, what are we doing about it? Are we staying as a black Afro-American or... Are we waking up to the light of the glorious gospel, <coughs> putting on the new garments? Shalom. Barakatai Yahweh. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Barakatai Yahweh. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Call Halayimla. Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Akakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh, in the name of his Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, cleansing, cleansing the glass lens. Cleansing the glass lens. So when the prophets received the prophecies, they did not fully understand what they were receiving. <clears throat> so it was like a dark, shadowy cloud it's kind of like when you, it's a good, a good metaphor. Let's say you it's at nighttime and you see a robber and everything's pitch black. And you go to describe him the next day. Most of the details are off. What was he wearing? What was his skin complexion? Was he white? Was he black, so-called? Did he have an afro? Did he wear dreads? So your ability to give or portray a vivid picture of the culprit is distorted. It's not very vivid or clear. So Bible prophecy is very similar. Remember, and you, brothers, please post scriptures while I'm speaking, please. <laughs> then shall that wicked be revealed. So when it was at nighttime, we did not really have a clear picture. Who is the wicked? What does it mean there should be a falling away first? So the Israelites fell away and would be displaced out of the Holy Land between 65 uh, leading up to 70 AD, where Vespasian and Titus would come in with great slaughter. So who is that culprit that we saw in the nighttime? So over the process of time, prophecy begins to simmer. It's like baking, or not baking, but when you marinate your meat. I love to cook. I'm a good cook, by the way. You marinate your meat and you let it marinate for a day or two. And then you take it out and season it a little more and cook it. 
So prophecy has to simmer a little bit, marinate. So now we know who that wicked is. Remember, and then shall that wicked be revealed. So the end of times or the last days prophecies are beginning to take shape. So trying to describe the description of the wicked, of the last ruling empire, of the world wars that are taking place and upcoming World War III, now we're able to give a more vivid description. Why? Because the light bulb was turned on all of a sudden. So now we can see the culprits in broad daylight. The veil is being lick, lifted up. Somebody post that, please. <laughs> Everything that was done in the dark shall be made uh, clear or revealed. Everything that's done in the dark. So now this, this gospel, remember, is compared metaphorically to the light. So now we're able to see clearly who's creeping into our sanctuary, who's infringing on the Lord's tabernacle. Now we can see through the glass clearly. Things are beginning to take more shape. Who are the up and coming priests and kings? Who's teaching in the last days? Who's prophesying? Let's get this one. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So Esau, which is Edom, which is Rome, which would take down Jerusalem and help to disperse or shatter, uh, scatter the Lord's flock. So the picture begins to make more sense. Whenever you're watching a Hollywood film, it's a what? A gradual buildup or suspense. Look that word up, suspense. So the Most High created a movie full of suspense. And there's a little foreshadowing or indicators, early warnings of things to come, or subsequent events. But without the suspense, then the movie is dull. Everybody's breaking their neck, you know, trying to watch the movie. So this movie that the Most High put together is full of suspense, theatrics. Many Jakes are in this thing, they're called, they're not chosen. They were raised up to help Keep the Lord's elect on their toes, sharp. You know, the slothful men, the haphazard men, one foot in, one foot out. The great area jakes sitting on the fence. You see? So all of this mixture in the pot is created to help the movie maintain its thrill, its shock and awe effect. Suspense by Brother Mahalala Yahawada. Suspense. A state of, oh, this is nice. A state or feeling of excited or anxious uncertainty about what may happen. See? So there is a sense of thrill, if you will. The Most High creates controversy. Why well, you think we got a thousand Negroes with their hat turned backwards? or playing the guitar, I'm King David, I'm King David. No, I'm King David, reminds me of that movie Life. I'm that baby's pappy, <laughs> I'm the pappy. Sit your ass down somewhere, no you're not. So without that contention, without that friction, without the good and the evil hitting or clashing, then we're breaking our necks in the movie theater. You know, who wrote this script? This movie sucks. So there has to be a point of friction or contention to stir up controversy. Is it not written, the Lord has a controversy with the nations and he's going to return for the controversy of Zion. 
Did they not debate? Is this not the son of Joseph? No way he is the Messiah. Wait a minute. Is he from Nazareth or Bethlehem? You see, the Lord is doing these things. I'm King David. Sit your ass down somewhere. Mahalalah Yahweh, Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Now, I want to talk briefly about that. This situation going on in Israel right now, the algorithms is like, oh, spy alert. Let's listen in. Okay. The way intelligence work, no way in the world you can launch a full-scale ground, air, and sea attack without the intelligence community picking it up. Everything you say is recorded on a cell phone or hidden CCTV and audio. And you got to communicate to be able to organize a synergistic assault with ground forces, air support. No way in the world you're going to do a surprise attack on the greatest military intelligence and collection platform on earth. Okay, the uh, Mossad, if I'm not mistaken, the Mossad. Okay, because they're surrounded on every side by their enemies, these Israelis. So you got to be kidding me. If you think we're going to believe, you launch a surprise attack. Listen, I don't like to talk about myself, but my background was military intelligence. All right? So you can't bullshit somebody that worked in that field. In order to, to um, establish a synchronized attack, major communication takes place. Okay, you're going to take the eastern sector. You're going to take the western sector. You're going to be the main assault. You're going to be the supporting effort. You're going to be the main effort. You're telling me not one conversation was intercepted. Esau, you are clearly, undeniably, unmistakably, the Pinocchio long-nosed devil that the Bible speaks of. You tic-tac hats. So you can fool a fool. But I've already walked that walk. No way in the hell you can organize or launch 5,000 rockets surprisingly, against probably the greatest, most robust intelligence platform on earth, the Israeli intel. They can damn near read your thoughts. That's how good they are. But yet you launch a successful surprise military campaign. Everything this devil does is a lie. And Netan, not a Jew, B. I got to be careful how I speak. Netan, not a jubilee. <laughs> you damn devils. Now we got to speak like we in kindergarten. He's under a lot of political attack right now. Okay? He's under a lot of controversy. So now they need the disorder or chaos to divert and deflect and consume the minds of the sheeple. What's this? Confederate, a person who works with especially in something secret or illegal, an accomplice, exactly. So, I mean, my background was this stuff. So, you know, you cannot launch a 5,000 rocket assault without early warning, early warning indicators being hit. All right, we got something here, boss. What's going on? Well, so-and-so was speaking to this person about this area, there's been some weapon transfers here. Rockets have been shipped from point A to point B. Well, we got a intelligence picture being established that we can paint now. So you can only fool a fool with dry lips and ashy elbows that can't close his damn mouth. Okay, I'm just telling you. And then there was another report of a taxi cab driver picked up a man which appeared to be a native African or from Ham, a hermetic descendant. He had a, a United Nations ID, and he reported to the taxi cab driver. 
He's under UN orders, receiving $2,200 a month and have been put, put up in a hotel and receiving a stipend, coming over here as a hired mercenary. So these type of things are leaking out now. You see, which reminds me of Psalm 60 and um, Psalms 106, if I'm not mistaken. Over Philistia will I triumph, which are Hamites, and over Edom will I cast out my shoe, which is Edom, which starts with the daughter of Babylon. Remember uh, Psalms 137. You see, remember, O Lord, the daughter of uh, Babylon, which, <laughs> which is Edom or, of America. Let's read this. Brother Shapal of the 12th, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Exactly. And every time you go into 911, they take down the video, so I can't go into detail. But 911 was a pal of Bravo Sierra or BS. Bull, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep. I'm just telling you. The caveman is very slick and subtle. Remember, this animal was the most subtle beast of the field. So he knows how to duck and dodge and slither his way up into high positions. How do you think Haman or Haman got his position? They did the same thing in Israel and started to call themselves us, the Tic Tac hats or the Pin Pinocchio people wearing Tic Tacs on their head. Pinocchio people wearing little black Tic Tacs, okay, with the long noses. Now we can identify you, not just by your, by your nose, but by your actions, your characteristics, your traits, your deception. There's multiple identifying features of you, brother... Brother Kwana Awaf, Sirach 21 and 9. The congregation of the wicked is like tow wrapped together, and the end of them is a flame of fire to destroy them. Exactly. So this wicked is a network, a global elite, led by the 13 Illuminati families, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, you see, the Vanderbilts, Brother Mashiach Arazaka, Revelation 17 and 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Exactly. So this woman is pushing a a international liberalism, which is getting the nations to embrace a man or a man in order to become a, or become deemed a democratic state, a woman on woman, legalizing a child, a young boy, being able to cut off his rod, change his plumbing. If the nations don't comply with these gross abominations, you know, this liberalistic or international liberalism, then they're deemed terrorist states or unstable or third countries, third world countries, if you will, because they won't comply with what's called progressiveness or progressive modern political platforms and agendas. They're not assessed as being a progressive nation. You see, they're uncivilized if you don't agree to the Brokeback Agenda or the carpet munching platforms, okay? Or the rod cutting or the breast removal type stuff for lustful reasons, if you will. So these nations are drinking from the cup of the daughter of Babylon. Somebody post that we would have healed the stinking hope, but she is not healed, okay? So the Lord is not going to heal Babylon. She has intoxicated the kings of the earth, drunk off the wine of Babylon. Broke back men, aggressive, loud, masculine women, 
okay, walking around like this. I mean, that's not attractive at all, at all. A man wants a woman that's like a delicate flower. He's going to pick you then if you're a flower. Then he'll pick you. But if you're a thorn or a briar, hey, look, burn that nigga. I'm not picking that. Set a fire to this briar patch. You got to be a delicate, sweet, smelling flower, calming and delicate. Not walking around like this right here. You see, but see, in the daughter of Babylon, they've normalized this confusion. And you men are absolutely pathetic, by the way. Very emotional and scared and can't make a manly decision. Your emotions drive you. Okay, I, I was a loner for a long time, man. Tired of dealing with bitch-made men. Let's go here to the book of Jeremiah 51. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 12. Set up the standard. Well, we would have healed Babylon. Where's that one? So it'd be somewhere around verse five or six. Right here. Brother Shapa of the 12. I'm going to get into my Bible. My screen is jumping and I'm getting everything outside of we would have healed Babylon. Right here. Brother Gabar Adama. Jeremiah 51. All right, let me pull it up on this, on my Bible here. Jeremiah 51, so she's not going to be healed or salvaged, delivered. She's going to be burned with fire. Jeremiah 51. Look at Jeremiah chapter 51. Let's go to verse 5. For Israel have not been forsaken. Why is Vocab Malone teaching a replacement theology. Why? We just read that we're not done away with. Vocab. So Vocab Malone is, is losing traction. He's losing ground. I'm just telling you. Don't take it out on me. I'm just a messenger. Relax, please. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51, verse 5. For Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. So they enslave the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. So the Lord gets his payment in blood. He is the father of spirits. So he's measuring your deeds through your spirit. So that bloodshed is how your spirit returns unto him. You can't say, hey, yo, look here, Most High. I'm going to go ahead and cut you this check, and I'll pay you the rest of it when I get my tax refund check or my government stipend. It don't work that way. Your blood is getting ready to be sacrificed and your soul is going to return to him that made it. If somebody can post that, I think it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. Christianity has bugged out, you the Babylonians, bugged out. When I get my tax refund, then you get paid. Okay, the day of the Negro Afro-American is on its way out. There's the door. There's the door. This is ridiculous. So that golden cup is her wine, her delusional philosophy. Man-made men, I, I mean uh, fe feminine men and manly women. Everything is upside down here. And our kids, they act like the adults. You got a two-year-old wearing a diaper that snatched the remote control out of your hand and he's sitting on your favorite chair. And he told you to sit on the floor Indian style. But under the daughter of Babylon, toxic masculinity if you put that child back where he needs to be. So the Lord is going to destroy this place. Witches, Jezebels, warlocks, effeminate men, scared men and disorderly kids. 
Everything is out of order here. Brother Shabab the 12th, Surat 12 and 6. No, when the soul goes to the Father, Ecclesiastes, let's get that one. Ecclesiastes 12. We'll read that one too. This is good too. So we've been taught God loves everybody. Big Mama said, just come as you are, baby. Jesus is going to take care of you. You just come as you are. Okay, that's a lie, Big Mama. The scriptures teach otherwise. Brother Shapar the 12, Sirach 12 and 6. For the most high hate of sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their judgment. So there's a blood exchange. Somebody post that, please. Since thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. You see that? So the most high can only be appeased by your spirit returning unto him and your blood sprinkling into the ground. I love you, how about shipping how shot. Just imagine it. Broke backs, witches, pedos, pedo, all types of wickedness going on. Scared men, cowards, all of them going into the pit. That's beautiful. That's a soup, if you ask me. That's a gumbo. Brokebacks and witches and warlocks. All right, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. So the Lord has got a melting pot that he's getting ready to create, a gumbo. You see that? He's beautiful. This is what gives me peace of mind, seeing these brokeback-ass men walking around. Here it is, we coming up missing every day, being poisoned, fed false propaganda news, labeled on the books as three-fifths of a man, and we still have men. you got to beg to do the work and feed the Lord's flock. But the Lord is like, be, be patient, Amawanabad. I got this. All praises to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai. All praises to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai. He's like, be patient. Be patient. It's coming. It's coming. Let's read this. See? All praises to you, how about Shimmy Havashai? I love the Lord. Hey, let's go. So all you damn cave beasts and all this wickedness is going to be melted together in a, in a melting pot. Why you think America's called the melting pot? Let's read this. Brother Gabar Ayash, Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. This is beautiful. So the Lord is stirring up a gumbo sense. Okay, witches, warlocks, thugs. A thug will shoot up his own community, but a caveman can beat his ass. Them, what you call that zoning? Gentrify his neighborhood, beat his ass, throw him in prison. Make him pay 10000 a month for a woman that committed adultery. He ain't got nothing to say against a slave master. But his brother that looks like him and is an Israelite can just look at him wrong. He'll shoot up the entire family in the neighborhood. That's an unequitable Negro, an Afro-ass American, black, which means darkness without light. But the devil can throw your ass in prison for a crime you didn't commit for 35 years. And you're just saying, well, Jesus forgives him and God loves everybody. If you can't see why the Negro must become extinct, then you are part of the problem. But the spirit of the Lord is like, just be patient, my son. Just be patient and wait on me. I'm coming. I believe you. Yeah, how about Shimmy Habashai? A Negro will shoot you dead for stepping on his Nikes that was made by slave labor. But the day of the Afro-American black-ass Negro 
is on his way out the door. There's the door. Let's read this. Brother Shaphab the 12, Numbers 35 and 34. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit wherein I dwell. For I the Lord shall dwell among the children of Israel. Ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your power and none else. So the Lord has a sanctuary here in the midst of Babylon being built. And his people have been persecuted, slaughtered. And you just told us to let bygones be bygones. But yet the entire nation is mobilized when the Twin Towers get, you know, okay, I got to watch what I say. Yeah, we need to mobilize every man, woman, and child to avenge this blood. No intel is going to miss a major attack like that. Let me just say that, all right? I got to be careful with what I say. Everything you do or say is under constant surveillance. There is no such thing as a damn, we got caught off guard as America by this surprise attack. Ain't going to happen, all right? The technology today can read your fingerprint, all right, from outer space. So you telling me some vigilantes out of nowhere, out of the woods, just came out of nowhere and did a surprise attack. Okay, don't blow the smoke up my behind because it's not going to work. Not going to work, sleazy E. Why you think Genesis said and the serpent was the most subtle beast of the field. Why? Because when he approaches you, well, hello, how are you? My name is Bob. My name is John. How are you? How's your family and kids? But this nigga is thinking about eugenics, how to depopulate you. Hi, my name is Jimmy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All theatrics. So this man is subtle in his hatred. And then he promotes a God loves everybody doctrine. But we're still at the bottom in three fifths of a man. Okay, I, I got it. I believe you. I believe you, Sleazy. Unbelievable. Evil E is a damn sociopathic psychopath. But see, there's a right hand side of that. I'm going to just leave that right there of this similar mentality. All right, a lot of their heads are going to be on their laps. Let's go here. To the brother Gabar Adama, Surat 12 and 16. Beautiful as an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. See that? So this devil is smiling at, and you Negroes are showing all your teeth. Look like a cartoon character with a black face and some damn white stones in, in the middle of that hole in your face. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thinking you're his equal. When the scriptures say otherwise. As soon as he shakes your hand, you just melt. Oh, Bob, it's so nice to meet you too. Let's go golfing together. Can we play golf together? You know, unbelievable. So the Lord is going to get rid of the simps. They got to go. They have got to go. I have no, listen, if you're not in this, in this ministry or in this truth, I have zero sympathy for you. Zero. You're like an animal, an animal, if you're not grounded in this truth with the Lord's spirit on you. I see animals, period. And we all should be there. Let's go here. See, brother, Ghana Awaf, Psalms 55 and 21. Told you, so this serpent speaks real nice, you know? Would you care for some coffee? You see that? I got a Cuban cigar for you. Get away from me, cave man. I know your history and your track record. You got a warrant out for your arrest. Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. They broke over 413 treaties with the so-called Native American Indians, Gad, Reuben, Simeon, 
over 1,413 treaties broken. But we come in peace, yeah, right. The caveman only knows war, bloodshed. A caveman only knows violence. A heavy hand approach. Is he not called a hammer of the earth? Okay? If all you got is a hammer, then you treat every situation on earth globally with a hammer and nail effect. We got to bring the hammer. But the problem is only a small anthill. Everything don't necessitate dropping bombs on poor nations. To go after your God, gold, oil, and drugs. So the small hats are the most subtle beasts of the field. What is that field? The world, this kingdom. Why are they subtle? Because they speak nicely and smooth. And quite often, Eve gets seduced into this, this effeminate talk. We've been taught that that means love because it comes off very calmly and sweet, but the real truth is in our actions. Are we lying to you? Are we preaching salvation of the gospel as it is written? Is our gospel sound? If the spirit is not on you, you are an animal. All right? And we all should be at that stage. It shouldn't just be a few of us like that. If the spirit is on us, then this is what we see through a spiritual lens. Brother Christopher Clark, Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Let's go to one of my favorites. Let's go to Psalms, <coughs> Psalms 120. So getting back to what I was saying earlier, Philistia, Edom, Moab, many of these are military age men coming over here. They're in shape. I have yet to see one of these couple of million migrants with a damn beer belly, looking like they're six months pregnant. Not one. And there's hundreds of thousands of them. Many of them are probably East Indian Special Forces. Hamedic Nation Special Operations Forces, Moab Special Operations Forces, China, Gurkha troops come out of Britain. They're British Special Operations Shock Troops, the uh, Gurkha troops. You got Special Operations out of China. These are badasses coming over here. Not six months pregnant like most of you American military and your average police officer in this third trimester. Talking about get on the ground, do it, do it now. All right, these are military age hardened war fighters, mighty men. But the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimmy Hamashai says, And thy mighty men, O T man, shall be dismayed. So the Lord is going to turn it up, the battle axe of his right hand, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimmy Hamashai. Let's go here. Yep, Brother Shabbat the 12th, Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. So the doctrine here in the daughter of Babylon, it's like a drug. It feels good to speak sweetly to deceive and tell everybody that it's okay, come as you are. You can be wicked as hell, but Jeebus Cross accepts you. It feels good to say all nations are equal, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Then there's a round of applause and a crowd cheering. So the feel-good story of the wine of Babylon intoxicates us in a dumb stupor, okay? We become sleep, numb, spiritually numb to the truth that the Lord loves Israel and he's going to deliver his elect out of the daughter of Babylon 
and out of all the nations where we've been scattered. So this perverse spirit, it seduces our innermost spiritual connection to the most high. Why you think we're called harlots when we lie down with this feel-good harlot of the daughter of Babylon? Because we're committing adultery when we're seduced by the spiritual stupor of witchcraft. Why you think over 60% of Americans are on psychotropic drugs because we're not operating under a natural frequency. The frequency or the course of the earth is off. This melting pot of peoples, multitudes, religions, nations, and tongues is mass confusion, organized chaos. Let's go here to Brother GMS in his likeness. Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So this man's spirit is poisonous. He seduces us with his feel-good stories. We're all equal in God's eyes is what? A good selling point. Israel loved to be sold lies. Why? It's a drug. It feels good. We want to be told our poop don't stink. We want to be told we can have any other man's wife that we want. We want to be told that a young boy can cut off his plumbing, okay, or gut out his natural plumbing. We want to be taught that a man is really masculine, I mean, a woman is really masculine and is on the same lane or playing field as a man. We want to be told that the Lord does not discriminate and that he does not have favorites. When the scriptures purely tell us that he loves Israel and he's going to set up his elect for salvation to rule over the nations and enslave the other nations under us. That does, that does not sound like a good selling point. So we want to be sold on this universal one size fits all idea, a new idea, a new world order where the universal aspirations of mankind can reach its universal greatness. Not the order or the law of the jungle, but a new idea. So we love to hear this sales pitch. You see, we love the commercials, the feel-good stories, the drugs, the wine. We want to be stupefied and intoxicated with a massive one-size-fits-all poster board that makes us feel warm and tingly inside. We're being seduced by the lies and the poisonous tongue of the most subtle beast of the field. Eat them. <coughs> or the Aramya, Malachi 1 and 3. Let's go to verse 2. I have loved you, Malachi 1 and 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So that is pending right now. It starts with fracturing of the social atmosphere. The economic atmospherics is fracturing. So there's a socioeconomic collapse. The divisions amongst the people. So the glue that held America together, the lies that we're all equal, we're all Christians, we're all the same. You see, under this liberal, liberal, progressive, social, political atmosphere, it's falling apart because it was a Walmart glue. It was not the high level, high impact, temperate spiritual mortar. So the walls of Babylon are crumbling and flaking or decaying now because it was not built on solid truth, a solid foundation, the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So it's beginning to fracture the chip away. Why did the cookie go to the doctor 
because he felt crummy. Terrible joke. Anyway, let's keep going. So the Lord is going to save his people. Matthew 1 and 21. Matthew 2 and 6. Matthew 15 and 25. I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he is gathering his flock. It's consistent throughout the Bible. Brother Shaphat the 12, Jeremiah 2 and 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. So he hated the wicked because they were created to be destroyed. They were created to be perverse. They were created to be contrary to Jacob. Is it not written, thou shalt not revile the gods? So Jacob was created to be the sons of the living power, set up as a pinnacle or as a beacon of light of the illuminated ones to rule over the land of gross darkness, to illuminate the earth through wisdom, shining bright with knowledge and understanding. But we're trying to downplay what the Most High said. The Most High got it wrong. We're really all made out of flesh and blood. So we're ignoring that his spirit dwells in Zion. Somebody post that. Sirach 24. His tabernacle is in Zion. His Holy Spirit rests on Mount or to Zion. Zion, a memorial of his people. He cannot destroy an essence of his own self, his Holy Spirit. It's pure fire. It's ancient. It's original. It's not GMO. It's not built on lies, Walmart glue. Well, your shit is falling all apart, your structure, your model. A model of the walls of Babylon, like the walls of Jericho, is built on unstable ground. Or the Shapa of the Twelve. It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him in whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house <coughs> and into the chamber of her that conceived me. So we're born again through the birth canal of the Holy Spirit. We must be born again, not re-enter into our mother's womb, but we must be renewed through a spiritual renovation, a spir spiritual change, a metaphysiological change, which starts within our temple and leads to an immortal, everlasting change, a new body, a new spiritual mindset, a new makeup, a new outlook, a new look on life, a new perspective which is going to be a direct mirror of the Heavenly Father, his word, his seed. As a man marries a woman and plants his seed into that woman and builds up her mindset to match his, a mind well instructed through the Holy Spirit of instruction or the Bayan Yasharala. Let's go here, the book of Sirach 24 and 8. Here it is, because I'll forget what I called out. Sirach 24 and 8. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. So this is the nurturing spirit of wisdom. Sophia, you see, this is that spirit, a comforting spirit, can only be given to the Israelites. So this is deeper than us all bleeding the same, being made out of flesh and bones. This nurturing spirit is only gifted to the Lord's chosen people. So this wisdom is what builds an eternal enterprise of rulership. Let's read that again. This is the cut line, the dividing line that separates the Lord's inheritance from the other beasts of the field. 
Sirach 24 and 8. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. So it's going to descend and be with men, the tabernacle of the Lord, through Yahawashai, an extension of the Most High Father. I know you see it. If a Negro can't get it, we're moving on. Run that by me again, please. If a man don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't need to be trying to put that Negro in a, a damn chokehold, a police chokehold, forgot what it's called, or a sidearm, arm bar, uh, you know, judo position, or jujitsu. If he can't get it, leave him. Let him be. You know, we can't be trying to lock him up when I got your ass now and trying to, through osmosis, take the Bible and push it through the backside of his skull. That's bugged out. But that's what that's how Jake operates. You know, pin him down. Don't let him go. You choking him. No. The Lord has already measured out his elect. A sad number. We cannot dictate to the Father what is. Because he is. That's why I told you a Negro is dangerous. He's going to try to rewrite the Most High's mind. A Negro is dangerous, okay? Yeah, you got him in a damn a rear naked chokehold. I got your ass now, nigga. You gonna get this doctor? Get him. I can turn it up, and choke your ass out. You don't get it within three seconds. You gonna pass out? No, that's off. But a big mama raised bitch made man cannot get that. He's not going to get it. I'm just telling you. You can get mad all you want. All right, let's read this. Brother Mahalala, Yahawada, 2 Ezra 6 and 28. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. So Yahweh Shai, that man descending, is going to be declared. But right now, in the spirit, the Ambassadors of Yahweh Shai is doing what? Heralding his doctrine, the essence of him. So he's present right now, yes, through the Spirit. I shall send you a comforter which shall teach you all things. So we've been parsed out and apportioned different measures within our cups of understanding and sacrifice. You see? But he's literally going to be revealed as well. Where they saw that man descending or ascending. I think it's 2 Ezra 13, read 29 through 31, somewhere in there. 2 Ezra 13. But right now he's being revealed <clears throat> the, through the uh, doctrinal sound doctrine that we're presenting, which is from Yahweh Shai. Let's get ready to close out. My voice and my throat is dry. So now I gotta pick whichever the spirit say, read this. I'll read it. <clears throat> yep. So the Lord is only gonna save who he scattered. We cannot force the most high's arm to do what we think the way it should go down. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. This is beautiful. You see that? So the Lord's church is being built. Remember, we read that in Sirach 24. So what are we witnessing? We're witnessing the rebuilding of the spiritual stones being brought back together and building a replica model on earth as it is in heaven. Because in the beginning, the spirits were all together as one church, the Lord's elect, Yahweh Shai, the chief high priest, ordained of the Most High, King David, the 12 disciples, 
of 144,000 mighty men, followed by a large remnant. The original church is being rebuilt and reset on the spiritual mortar, where the stones will never be displaced or scattered again. So the Lord is rebuilding his inheritance, his church, built upon the sure foundation of wisdom and knowledge. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, after the order of Malat Tazadah, the order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, the tabernacle of David, is being raised up from the graves and from the ashes and from the dust of confusion. Pan Yasharala in the bud, the bar. We got next, Lord willing, Baraka Thumb, Shalom. Yeah, let me put this Negro in the full Nelson. He'll get it then. Then he'll be like, I know what the chip is. Nope. Here it is. Yahweh Shai is the spirit of, of, of testimony. Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy and, you know, testimony. But you'll have a Negro talking about, I worship Yahweh only. You worship Yahweh only, but Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy that told us what would happen in the last days with this chip. Stop trying to put a Negro in the full Nelson headlock, all right? Or choke him out. He's going to die either way. He's going to die through you or, you know, whatever. He's a walking zombie. You're wasting your time, energy, and effort. You might want to save that for these Gurkha troops coming in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, we're only saved through the spirit and power of mercy of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Not through carnal means. The Lord is going to raise up his elect. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Pam Yashawala. And the Bad Baba. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shalom.